And we're joined now by the Opposition Leader, Tony Abbott. Welcome. Evening, Chris. Looking at losing an MP looks a bit like, like carelessness, doesn't it? Look, uh, I might have lost a vote, but the Prime Minister has shredded her integrity or anything that she had left in that department. And what's happened today is that the Prime Minister has demonstrated that there's not a principal she won't trash, not a colleague she won't uh, shaft, if necessary, uh, to strengthen her hold on the top job. How is this trashing principle? Well, plainly, this is a squalid manoeuvre to shore up her numbers in the Parliament. Uh, she'd been put on notice by Andrew Wilkie over the poker machine deal. Uh, obviously, she's got uh, a looming problem with Craig Thompson, the member for Dobell. Uh, that was going to put her numbers in jeopardy uh, early in the new year, and that's why we've seen this squalid fix today. So in her place, what would you have done? Well, uh, I don't do these kinds of deals. Are you uh, certain about that? I am, I am not in the business uh, of this kind of operation. What about Mal Colson? Were you in favour of what happened in the Senate all those years ago when yeah. the Howard government did something very similar? And uh, I am not in the business uh, of defending what happened all those years ago. Uh, what happened today was a squalid political fix uh, by a government that is increasingly in crisis. Uh, this is a government which lost control of our borders, lost control of our budget. Uh, it's in danger of losing control of the parliament. Uh, and so they've lost their speaker to try to shore up the prime minister's position. In fact, she's now more in control of the parliament than she was yesterday. Well, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see, Chris. Uh, um, Andrew Wilkie uh, has put her on notice. Uh, she's got a Craig Thompson problem. Uh, and now, if I may say so, uh, she has got uh, a non-Labor speaker uh, that she is going to have to rely on, as well as the Greens and the Independents. If anything, this is a government which is more fragile, a Prime Minister whose position is more tenuous, and I think uh, it won't be very long at all before people are saying what got into the Prime Minister to do this. Yet again, it's her judgment that will be in question. All the people that you mentioned now have a very big vested interest in making sure that this government goes full term. You're the only one who thinks that it will go short term. Well, the government will go for as long as the government does. The trouble is, it is a very bad government. I mean, this is a bad government getting worse. Uh, there's the carbon tax based on a lie. There's the mining tax based on a secret deal. And of course, there's the border protection fix, which just isn't working. Doesn't this reflect on your leadership? If Anthony Albanese could see that Peter Slipper was gettable, why couldn't you? Well, I'm not in the business uh, of uh, ordering a speaker to resign uh, and then doing this kind of deal. What about tending to your own party though? The LNP, there'd been problems with Peter Slipper for a while. You knew his pre-selection was under, under threat. You knew that last year that he went against your ruling in, in going for the Deputy Speaker's job. Um, obviously, uh, Peter Slipper had some problems uh, with his pre-selection. Um, lots of members of Parliament from time to time have problems with their pre-selection. In the end, the only people who can deal with that uh, are the member concerned uh, and the local party organisation. But the fact is, this happened today because the Prime Minister forced a good speaker out of his job uh, to bring in a new person to shore up her numbers in the Parliament because she knew those numbers were going to evaporate in the new year. What at all, what at all is wrong in a Prime Minister shoring up her position in order to make sure that she can put through the kind of program that she wants to put through? Well, and they've been quite successful at that recently. Uh, uh, let's wait and see how this all unfolds. Look, I, I accept, Chris, that uh, the Prime Minister minions are running around the press gallery saying, haven't we been clever? Isn't this fantastic? And inside the Beltway, that may well be the case. People think, my God, uh, she is so Machiavellian, so brilliant. But as far as the public are concerned, this will look like a very squalid manoeuvre uh, by a Prime Minister who has no integrity whatsoever. They think this is an incompetent and untrustworthy government and what happened today will reinforce that. The, the Prime Minister has made one strategic gamble and that is that her government will go full term and over the course of time people will see that it's better than you say it is. You believe it will go short term. Isn't your strategy now being exposed, not hers? Well, as I said, uh, uh, at all times my job has been the same, Chris. Uh, it's been to uh, expose the flaws in this government uh, and to be a credible alternative. And you know, at the heart of being a credible alternative is not being 
completely unprincipled. And that's what we saw from the Prime Minister today. There is no one, no colleague, uh, who is safe uh, from political assassination if it's going to help the Prime Minister's political interests. And what we saw was the Sussex Street death squads come out again today, as they did a year or so back with Kevin Rudd. This is the fourth anniversary of the government today, Chris. Did they want anyone to mention that? No, they didn't, because the last thing they wanted was to stress the fact that the person leading the government today is not the person who was leading the government uh, when it came into power four years ago. And you ago. play politics harder than anyone. Are the people expected to believe that it's faced with the same circumstance, you wouldn't have done exactly the same well, thing? Well, uh, uh, judge me uh, by what I have done and what I have not done, and I have never done anything like this. You didn't see that Peter Slippy was coming, that there was a problem there. Are you listening to your colleagues? That's one of the criticisms that coming out of your own caucus well, now, out of your own joint party room. Well, you know, Chris, uh, obviously uh, there was a slipper issue uh, from after the last election uh, when he accepted the government's nomination uh, as Deputy Speaker. Uh, that was when, if you like, uh, the deal was originally done. I suppose the deal was sealed today. Uh, but the added ingredient is that we've now seen a Prime Minister prepared to order out of office a good Speaker in order to shore up her numbers in the Parliament. Is your short-term strategy being exposed, do you think, at the moment? Some of the fixes that you've got in superannuation, for example, recently, you said that you're going to keep the superannuation guarantee lift from 9 to 12 per cent, and yet you're going to get rid of the mining tax. How are you going to manage that? Well, the interesting thing about the mining tax uh, is that the government is going to be $6 billion uh, short by the time the tax is in. They're going to spend $14 billion. Uh, they say they'll raise $11 billion. No one really believes them. They've got to give $3 billion back to the states. There's a $6 billion hole. Now, by abolishing the mining tax, uh, that's going to be a $5 billion boost to the budget bottom line. So that's not going to be a problem at all. That's going to improve the fiscal position of the Commonwealth. By abolishing the carbon tax, uh, we're actually going to be $4 billion better off to the bottom line of the Commonwealth. This government is so hopeless that it can't even impose new taxes without losing money. Why isn't your own side convinced by that argument then? They, they see themselves, this is what you've just said, as voodoo economics, that in fact you are now getting a big ledger of bills against the government, against what would be a future, future government that you can't pay. And are you trying to tell me, Chris, uh, with a straight face that the political situation of the opposition is problematic uh, and that the government's political situation is strong. Is the government finishing the year better than you expected it to? This government is finishing the year in exactly the same way it started the year, revealing itself as utterly unprincipled, utterly focused on hanging on to office, not interested at all in the Australian public and their welfare, only interested in their own survival. There are shades of 1975 hanging around this government now. Um, they can't control their legislation in the parliament. Uh, a whiff of scandal, and now they've lost a speaker. Gough Whitlam revisited. What do you make of a man, uh, Peter Slipper, who used to be a member of the National Party and left them, used to be a member of the Liberal Party, left you today to become the speaker in a Labor government? Well, it's not what I make of him. He's not my man. He's the Prime Minister's man now. It's what she makes of him. It's what she says about him because now she's the one who has to defend him. The Liberal Party of course know him better than anyone. Are there things that the public should know about Peter Slipper that you will make known? Uh, look, uh, um, uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, I am getting on with my job. Uh, my job is to expose the flaws in a bad government and to be a credible alternative. Uh, I don't play the sorts of games that the Labor Party played today. Tony Abbott, thank you. Thanks, Chris. To other news now.